This is a brief discussion of where plastics come from and what happens to plastics when we dispose of them. Plastics, as you may know, is really short for thermoplastics, or the Greek plastic, something that's changed, thermo, heat, something that's changed by heat. You've probably heard the term polymers. Polymer is the Greek many. Polymers are derived from monomers, which means one. Polymers are basically long chains of monomers strung together. Where do we get the monomers? Well, we have two choices. We can either get them from natural gas, which contains things you probably heard of like propane, propylene, ethylene, ethane, hence the word polyethylene, polypropylene, long chains of these things strung together. There's another school of thought, which is bioplastics. It's really nothing new. Henry Ford made cars out of soybean oil. What's really popular right now is to take sugar cane, this is made by Mother Nature, and converted into polyethylene or polypropylene by a company called Braschem. Now this does not degrade but it is being warranted and marketed as a green plastic or a green polyethylene, green polypropylene, because it's derived from something that they maintain is much more renewable than, say, natural gas, which is a fossil fuel and is going to eventually be depleted. How long that's going to be is anybody's guess. Now, since polymers are basically natural gas, they are flammable because they'll just do what comes next when we set fire to them. They will, they will burn. I'm not going to actually burn this, but you get the idea. Another popular choice for feedstocks from plant-derived or bioplastics is corn. You've probably heard the term PLA or polylactic acid. This is made by fermenting corn and creating the monomers out of fermented lactic acid, hence the term polylactic acid. There's that term poly again. This piece of plastic was actually made out of corn. Now what happens to plastic after we dispose of it? This is why we're here at what we, local calls, we locals call in Cincinnati Mount Rumpke. When it's finished, it will be approximately 1,275 feet tall, and it will be one of the tallest points in Ohio. Which brings me to the next point. What happens to plastic after we dispose of them? Well, your conventional plastics are going to degrade in 350 to 400 years is the half-life, arguably, which is why that landfill contains many layers of plastic to keep all the toxins from households from leaching into the water table. People pay a lot of attention to end of life. There's a couple schools of thoughts as to how to break down plastic more rapidly than this natural half-life. There's one school of thought which is to add something to the ethylene-based polymers or natural gas based polymers to make the plastic degrade faster than its normal natural half-life. There's a school of thought which is oxobiodegradables. Those are promoted by a company called EPL and Symphony. There are other companies which are not oxobiodegradables who have a proprietary basically enzyme or catalyst such as Enso or Ecologic who make the plastic degrade rapidly. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is a matter of debate. The engineers here at Rumpke probably won't like it because it will contribute to dimensional stability over the years. At Brentwood Plastics, we are completely material neutral. We offer conventional polyethylenes. We offer polyethylenes with any number of these ways to make them break down. We also offer the bio-based plastics, which can either not break down like the conventional plastics, or they can 
be made to degrade in sunlight and heat so that if they're disposed as litter, they'll just break up. Whether that goes on to biodegrade is a matter of very hot debate in the plastics industry. We hope you've enjoyed this little primer on where plastic comes from and where it goes. Thank you.